This is week four of the fall trimester of 2017. My portrait painting is going surprisingly well. Usually for every painting that I do, I have this stage where I kind of drop the ball and things kind of fall apart for a little while, but so far everything's moving along really nicely for it. On Monday, I did the first wash of the painting. So I got the drawing transferred up onto the canvas and I think it went really well. Um, probably the best transfer that I've done. And I think for that reason is that, well, the brushes that I'm using, I bought new brushes and I think I talked about this in my last video or maybe the video before, but I just have some new uh, number four filberts and so that the edges on those are the bristles are, are nice on them and not flayed out so I'm able to be really precise with drawing with paint and so I think that's why the transfer drawing is going really well for that or the the um the first wash of getting the transfer drawing on my canvas. Tuesday then I started off with the shadow shape so I mixed up a shadow color and really thinly, mostly dry brushing the shadow on to the shadow color onto the shadow shape. So just to get the, that the shadow to get darker than what I had for the first wash. And then I'm also working on the background in the same way, really just dry brushing paint onto the background and making sure that I have a good relationship with the shadow to the background because those two values are really close together and if I can get those to have a nice close relationship like they do in nature, then the the light shape of Kevin's face uh, balance is really nice off of that. So then we have a clear shadow shape and light shape. And so this is the photo at the end of this stage with relating the shadow to the background, but I had time then that I could start working on the lights of the face. And so when I start doing the light values, this is the, the stage where I usually kind of lose control of the painting and things fall apart for a little while. So um, I took this photo so I could see the that stage. And so this is also on Tuesday, but me working the lights in. And so what I did with this is I just made up one mixture that represented Kevin's skin tone really generally. And I dry that dry brushed that on the face and the chest and really thinking about how I'm really just covering up the imprimatura that kind of has that gray look and I'm getting and I'm getting more closer to having it look like Kevin's skin so really thin paint really only one mixture just dry brushing it on and so so far the painting's going really well with um, working in the starting to work in the lights. Thursday I start off in the shadow again and this time um, I might have started using a little bit of medium I can't remember just so um, it gets a nice thin layer of paint down and the the shadow area is looking more unified. Dry brushing I feel like it has a tendency to be uh, spotty which is fine for the beginning stages when I'm still working out everything. I kind of like the atmosphericness of spotty paint, which gives me the feeling that I I can move things around pretty freely and I'm not locked into anything. But um, now I am starting to lock things in. So I'm getting the shadow nicely, repainting the background as well so that gets a nicer, more locked in layer of paint on it. And then I'm working out then from the shadow shape, so the darker half tones, and I'm blending that into the, the lights. And then at the end of the day, um, still mixing up, I think I have more than just one, I do have one more than one color for the, the, uh, the light shapes of the face, but still trying to do as few mixtures as possible. So I'm keeping everything as simple as possible. And when I'm using the lights, I'm more thinking about how I can be correcting the structure. So everything is still going smoothly and painting fairly thin, for me at least, painting thinner than I normally would and with as few mixtures as possible. Thursday, I spend the first part of the day always usually working in the shadow shape. This time, though the shadow is locked in pretty well so I'm not repainting the whole thing only 
areas where I need to correct the shape a little bit or maybe soften or sharpen an edge. And I like to do this anyway, starting with the, the shadow shape and the darkest half tone and correcting those because um, since I work from natural light as we start at 9 a.m. and so the the light gets a little bit stronger usually after the first 25 minutes so if I'm just spending the 25 minutes correcting the drawing that's fine and then I can um, mix up colors that are going to be more true for that session than maybe they would be like right at the, the start. So um, I corrected some of the drawing, the darker half tones, and then now I just go to the lights of the face because that's the farthest thing behind and um, I think I have a few more mixtures than I did the previous day but still as few mixtures as possible and painting as thin as I can get away with and I'm only painting thin so I can feel like I have more control of the paint while I am blocking in. And so with the lights what I did is what I started on the right cheek and I was just figuring out really the drawing of it making sure when I put in that light value of Kevin's cheekbone it helps me see if I have the right distance between the eye and the nose um, and so when I work on that cheekbone I then move over to his nose and making sure that the drawing is accurate between the bottom of the nose and the two uh, eyes and then from the nose I work to the other cheek and I find with my other paintings that if I work across really big planes, the the paint layer is nicer and a more fluid, natural look to it rather than doing a cheek, then another cheek, and kind of like doing this more spotty way, but I try and move over planes of the face so things kind of mesh really well on the painting. And so once I did that, I then moved down and kind of worked over that whole muzzle area in the lights and shadows, correcting the, the shapes. And then I worked up to the, the forehead and moved to the, the top of the head like that. And then Friday, I needed to paint Kevin's body because that part then is the furthest behind. It still has that first washy look to it. So I mixed up as few colors as possible that I could apply everywhere across his chest. I'm also working the colors that I'm using on the chest and seeing where I can work that, where I, where I see those colors in the background. Because the background's kind of this grayish purple and Kevin is has purple in his skin tones but I had a lot of uh, more ogres to it I guess in oranges so I was feeling kind of a disconnect between the background and almost like he kind of looked like a bit cut out and pasted onto that background so I want to try and get the atmosphere to feel like it's all around him so his body is affecting the background and the background is affecting his body so I'm just working the colors in and out of the background as I work on his body as well and um fixing up shapes while I do that and um, it the, the painting then it turned out pretty nice. I feel like I have a really nice base now, a really solid block in of Kevin that I can start on Monday and we have uh, five more days to work on him so one more week and that'll be it. And this is the smoothest painting that I've done so far. Like I said, I, I always seem to drop the ball during a painting and then I can get it at the end of it but this time it hasn't happened yet and I think I kind of passed up that stage which is nice and I think the reason for that is because I'm trying to simplify everything as few mixtures as possible painting thin just to help me feel like I have more control over the paint I do like paint that has thick brush strokes and areas um, where it has that like really nice flowy fluid look to it but I feel like I can work on that later but the block in I feel like just so I don't lose control it needs to be as thin as it needs to be for me to control it and then when things are more locked in drawing value and color wise then I can start playing around with um, more fun thicker brush strokes and now for my afternoon project with is my which is my still life of garlics 
This is what it looked like on Friday. So I already had the, the wash on there and it was nice and dry working on it on Monday. So Monday I start applying the color to try and get the values and the colors more accurate and doing everything like I did with the figure painting, which is using as few mixtures as possible to get the impression of all the colors and values up there and also painting relatively pretty thin for me just to make sure that I have control of what I'm doing. Tuesday and Wednesday I forgot to take pictures at the end of the days while working on this but I'm building it up the exact same way as I did the figure painting or the portrait painting. Thursday I've got a nice layer of paint on there and I'm starting to really lock everything in. I am having a lot of trouble with that red pot. I'm excited to paint that. That's probably the thing that I'm most having the most fun with. But it's also I'm it's really tricky too because the pot is not perfectly symmetrical and I like that about it because it has a nice characteristic the nice character of it symmetrical but kind of off at the same time so um, I'm just finding that tricky to paint that while making it look like that's a nice characteristic of the pot and not like I'm painting it poorly <laughs> so I'm kind of struggling with that a little bit and um, Matt talked to me about how to paint that and so what I had been doing was I would outline the pot and my brush strokes were following pretty much the drawing of the pot so the outline so I'd, I'd at the top and it come down like that and there are long brush strokes that kind of just just focused on um, the drawing and uh, the middle was painted in long brush strokes going down and some of them going across and I guess it wasn't looking very naturalistic either painting it that way and so he was saying if I adjust my technique for how I'm painting the pot that it might be easier to get it more accurate in how well how it actually looks so he was saying using shorter brush strokes and having the brush strokes actually represent the form of the pot so painting either with the form or against the form or across the form but each paint stroke is representing how the form of the pot is and so um, the pot isn't this like completely smooth symmetrical thing like I was saying it, it kind of has like bumps to it as it goes out and they're not exactly even on either side and so if I'm representing the form of that my brush strokes would instead of like being a long thin brush strokes like that they would kind of like follow those bumps and even how they're moving around the pot it's like the brush strokes are representing how the pot is actually moving in a three-dimensional space and so uh, I was doing that and finding that a hell of a lot easier to to get it down and it kind of um, doing it that way where I'm then painting the background into the pot and as the pot kind of like bumps out in areas uh, I will paint that into the background and so it's a looser way of painting which I like that look the loose and fluid look but also at the same time it's more accurate than having this tight drawing somehow which um, to me that sounds kind of counterintuitive but it's it's working really nicely um, it's more fun to paint that way and I'm getting better results so that's great um, he also was saying there's uh, there's a rug in the background and I had there's a pattern on the rug as well and so what I had was I had kind of these like um, swirling brush strokes that was trying to start to begin to represent the pattern of the rug and he was saying to again be thinking about the form of the rug and how the pattern actually is represented on the rug and saying that the rug is made up of threads that go down and across and so even though the, the pattern on it might be um, have swirls in it but it's made up from these down and across threads that make up the, um, the more swirling pattern so he was saying like st still represent that pattern but if I use brush strokes that are more up and down and, and across and side to side that will the strokes 
of paint will start to make up the texture that actually will then represent the rug and how everything's kind of threaded together like that. So um, I just began doing that. I still need to, to work on that a bit more. I'm finding that kind of a tricky thing. So um, we'll see how that goes, but that makes a lot more sense than what I was doing. And so he was, he was just basically saying that with still life, really, um, and it's good to think about how the thing is made up, its material, and also make sure that you're really um, representing the form and how things are moving in space with brush strokes. And I have to say, I applied this on Friday when I was working on Kevin's body, and I'm putting down these shorter brush strokes that are following the different forms of Kevin with the, the different um, the bones and the flesh and tendons and everything. And something really clicked in my mind with that, which is uh, Matt and Magda have both told me in, definitely my last critique was focused on that final critique, but um, other critiques as well, saying that when I paint and I'm focusing on the drawing, I start to lose the impression and vice versa, that when I focus on the impression, I will start to lose the drawing. But um, what Matt was talking about with having brush strokes, how they're applied to the painting, that um, the brush strokes are representing how the form is moving in space. If I do that while just thinking about the impression, but then as I'm getting the impression, I'm putting the brush strokes down with how the form is turning, that's a way that I can keep thinking about the drawing so I don't lose either one. So I could be improving the impression at the same time improving the drawing and it's kind of they're not the impression and the drawing aren't butting heads anymore but then they can start working together to um, progress the painting at the same time so that was um, a little epiphany that I'm glad I, I had and I think that'll make painting easier in the future and then on Friday what I did was I mixed up all the colors that I saw all the colors, well, mixing up as few colors as possible still, but um, all that I needed to paint, the pot, the garlic, the background with the rug, the slab of wood, and I was really focused on just that slab of wood and getting the garlics in the bottom of the pot to really sit nice and firmly on the plank of wood, but if I see a color that I'm using in one area, like maybe it's at the top of the pot, even though I'm not really working on that area, I'll put that in. And I think this is starting to help the painting look more naturalistic because before I would just focus on the pot or just focus on the garlics. And so the pot was just looking red and the garlics were just looking white. But there's, you really find all these colors throughout the whole painting and it makes them look like, not like they're, um, floating in outer space with no air and atmosphere, but like there is atmosphere all around them. So all these colors are affecting every other color in the painting. And so I think the still life um, is going pretty well, like my portrait painting. So definitely excited for, to next week to see how far I can, I can take them. Okay, and then finally my extras for the week. So here's my Solomon J. Solomon copy uh, Samson. I worked mostly on Delilah, her face, and a little bit on her body. Her face took way longer than I expected it to take. Her face, she's making a crazy face, and so I, it's like to get a crazy, that crazy look in her eye with, with her eyes kind of bulging out but not making her look like a monster. I think I, I got it though, so I'll be moving on to other parts in the future. Um, on Tuesday, here's a little pencil drawing that I did of Dimitri. And then on Wednesdays, we have an anatomy class and we're doing something different. Before it was just lectures and now we're doing workshops as well. And so we had our first workshop uh, this Wednesday and it was really nice. We focused on, we had lectures on the skull and then so on the workshop day, we, um, our anatomy teacher, Brett, had printed out different sculptures of, or paintings of heads and then it, on a sheet of paper, you would draw out the main planes of it while using comparative measuring, not side size. I'm trained in side size and I know how to do that. Comparative measuring is still a little iffy for me. So this was really good practice. And so I'm really looking forward to more of these workshops and I think it's a really good idea.